Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 15 of the OSU Preview Podcast, the Bowl Edition. I'm Alex Susky, joined by Asa Lucas and Jace Andrews. Guys, how are you doing on this fine Monday? I'm doing wonderful. I mean, hey, what, 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 what's there not to be happy about on a day like today? You know, I, I watched that Scrooge movie on Netflix recently, mm-hmm. and I'm in the Christmas spirit, so I'm, I'm in a good mood as well. Selection Sunday was yesterday, and it was crazy, in my opinion. Top four was really nothing unexpected. Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and Ohio State are the top four. Georgia will take on Ohio State in the Peach Bowl. Michigan takes on TCU in the Fiesta Bowl. What are your thoughts on the top four matchups? I like them. Here's what I will say, and I'm I'm just going to get this off. If I have said anything in this podcast to make people believe that I do not like Max Duggan, then guess what? I take it all back. That guy is an absolute dog. What he did in the Big 12 championship (laughs) is literally, like, no offense, I would give him the Heisman off that. That was such an incredible performance. I know they lost, but absolute, like, Hats off to him, man. Hats oh, off to Asa, him. Asa, I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like Jace is screaming at us how much he <laughs> loves Max. He's, he's passionate about a player who wears his heart on his sleeve. Well, and I, I will say. What um, will you say, Mr. There is no Tell bias me. behind this, but the fact that he had heart surgery earlier this mm. year before starting mm-hmm. a game was just incredible. It all comes full circle. It's As we were talking about before starting the podcast, I personally was a little bit shocked that TCU so made didn't. the four. I know a lot of people in the media have been pushing, given the Big 12 a little more love and respect as it deserves, but I really thought Alabama was going to sneak its way into the four spot. I was worried. Over, like completely TCU drops out, or you're saying Alabama instead of Ohio State? Uh, Alabama instead of Ohio State. Okay, I we've talked about this the last couple of weeks. I was 50-50, you know, why not believe that Alabama will make it in? But then... I think it was Saturday they had Nick Saban come on. Oh, yeah, I, was, I watched yeah, that interview and he, as he well. He had a very convincing case where, okay, well, Ohio State got embarrassed at home. Alabama's two losses were on the road at those teams' height of their season, and they lost in overtime and on the last second field goal. Okay? And, you know, Sunday during the selection show as well, they were talking about Alabama, but I was like, there's no way, there's just no way. And there wasn't a way. Unfortunately, Alabama is the yeah, the, the playoff fifth committee seed. stuck to their guns, and they they kept the same formula they've been using over the course of the past couple of years. And, and I appreciated that. Something a lot of people were wondering about is if TCU would drop to the four and put Ohio State in at the three to get a Michigan Ohio State. And for those who weren't necessarily watching live, they had the committee commissioner come on, and he said he said that that was never a discussion. We never talked once about having Ohio State Michigan play each other. We wanted the best four teams in that order. I mean, so. That's a fair. It it. I think over all all, all of the past couple of years, I think really this is the best formatted playoff we've seen. In my, I opinion. agree. I, I think the fact of the matter that we could potentially have a the big game as our championship game with Ohio State Michigan with C J Stroud getting that third and final chance to beat John Harbaugh's Wolverines? Is it John or Jim? Jim. Oh, dang. I miss. He was so confident. (laughs) Either way, C.J. Stroud, after the the loss to Michigan, was, in his post-game interview, devastated because he wanted to bring Ohio State to at least the playoff and a championship. And he thought at that time, because it looked that way, he was not going to get a chance. Okay, who who was the most devastating-looking quarterback? Max Duggan. Max, Duggan. Uh, Max, Max Duggan. Duggan over over Caleb Williams. One hundred percent. Caleb Williams. Oh, that's bad. tough. That's a tough one. I don't know. Caleb I would Williams say Caleb looked, Williams because yeah. See, I would, because Caleb had a Heisman and a playoff. Max Duggan really isn't in playoff or Heisman contention. And I think knowing that they lost in it was they lost in overtime, right? No. 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 T- USC got no TCU. 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 Oh yeah, lost TCU overtime. lost yeah. overtime. Yeah. No, 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 he lost. I don't think. I think he was just sad that they weren't undefeated. I don't think he was crying out in despair that, oh, we're not going to the playoffs. I think he was crying that he couldn't bring them the Big 12 championship. And now there is a legitimate possibility that you have a 12-win TCU team that doesn't have any hardware. They lost the Big 12 championship. No trophy. They lose to Georgia. That's a weird thing to think about. No hardware. 
That, that, no, I think it was more or less that he won a championship. That TCU's offensive coordinator learned nothing from our mistakes in the Big 12 championship last year and went for it on third and one and fourth and one on the one yard line and didn't get it in. Can, can I also just make a quick note about the Big 10 championship game? Yes. I don't know if, if y'all were watching mm-hmm. or not. But I was, and it was amazing to watch how Purdue's offensive scheme was very similar to ours on uh, screen pass, screen pass, running up the middle on third down and long. I was very, I was surprised. And one of at these that. teams made it to the conference championship. Here, here's what I'll say: um, DCU's offensive coordinator's brother probably told him to not watch the Big Twelve championship game because he was a little upset. TCU's offensive coordinator is Lincoln Riley's brother. Uh. So it all comes full circle in college football, it folks. It Another full Both circle. Both Riley's lost. Actually, if you look at CF, CFB on Fox's Instagram, they tweeted or posted out saying that the Big Twelve has come full circle. That oh. every single team has beaten each other. I saw you retweeted that. I did. I did. I thought it was cool. Looking, at, do you have any other top four takeaways or championship weekend takeaways? George is pretty much the best team. I would like to say that I did predict Utah to win. So. You did. You did. Uh, Tulane's have, has been a underappreciated team this year. So keep keep in, out on that. Hey, they, that. Their game versus USC will be a lot closer than and, folks think. And they beat Kansas State. So, Asa, that's a good segue into the New Year's Six games. So we start off with number 11, Penn State, taking on number 8, Utah, in the Rose Bowl. Number 10, USC, taking on number 16, Tulane, in the Cotton Bowl. Number 5, Alabama, versus number 9, Kansas State, in the Sugar Bowl. And number seven, Clemson versus number six, Tennessee in the Orange Bowl. Where do we start? Orange Bowl versus the Orange Teams. Orange Teams, <laughs> yay. I kind of think it's interesting. The rankings, maybe, that USC fell seven spots or six spots? USC was yeah, four. Yeah, they were fourth. Okay, six spots. I mean, they got crushed by a team they already lost to once. That's true. Um, I don't really have any. Asa, take it away. So if we're looking at these games schematically, Jace, I want you to tell me. And then, Alex, let's let's give okay. you a question. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's give some yeah. of your analysis. I think okay. it's fair. You've been doing such a good job hosting well, thank you, thank that you. we need to give you an opportunity to analyze a game for us. So out of these four games, for both of you, which will be the biggest upset? Hmm, that's a close one. Uh, man. I don't think it's Clemson, Tennessee, because they're ranked so close to each other. Don't forget but about a certain would... quarterback that transferred. DJ. Recently. And that Tennessee doesn't have head and hooker. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's going to be – I think Clemson's going to win that game. So um, then that would be an upset, technically. So that's, I, that, that, in your opinion, will be the biggest upset? No, the biggest upset would be Kansas State. You think Kansas State will defeat – Yes. Nick Saban, Bryce Young, and the hungry Nick Alabama. Saban looked absolutely defeated when they he did not so make the playoffs. He was so sad. This was the first playoffs that neither Alabama nor Clemson was in. Correct, which is why I think they're going to not show up to the bowl game. Bryce Young's going to the NFL. He's already won a national championship. What's the point? Hot take from Mr. Andrews. Okay, Alex? Well, he, he's won a national championship, right? Or am I, am I crazy? Bryce Young? They, he did not. They lost to Georgia. They lost last year. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe, maybe he'll, be, he'll be excited. I don't know. This is my thing. I could totally see Tulane winning unless USC plays with fire. Okay. But I think them losing probably lost all of their steam. Where, like, if this was earlier in the year and they're coming off of that loss, then, yeah, they're going to attack Tulane, they're going to prepare, and they're going to be mad, and they're going to be angry, and they're going to win. I think Tulane has a lot more to prove, and I think they're more excited. They're, I mean, when was the last time Tulane played in the Cotton Bowl? If Never. ever. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think Utah has the momentum over Penn State. I think that'll be a good win. Clemson, Tennessee, there's there's too many unknowns. And like you said, Jace, it's a very close matchup. I have to root for the Vols as a Tennessee uh, native. We hope you would. So I, I'll pick my biggest upset is Tulane. Okay. I like it. I got Kansas State. I think we can do it. Hey, so what, just real quick. That's crazy. Uh, you know, I would love. My heart tells me Kansas State is going to pull off an upset against Bama, but my gut tells me Tulane. Okay, is going to pull it off. Just uh, for your answer, I looked it up quickly. The last time Tulane in a played in a bowl of this caliber 
They don't say what it was, <laughs> but it was in 1939. Oh, man. They probably didn't so, have names. They got a lot they want to prove. Tulane does. All right. We have, we're going pretty quickly through this podcast, so it might be a shorter episode, but the bulk of it is going of our analysis is going to come from talking about the Big 12 Bulls. I also have an interesting stat when okay. we get there. Uh, oh. Are we going there now? We're about to move in. So Okay. Uh, of the, what, what? how many ball games are there? One, two, there's three, like 42. Four. Five, games. six, seven, eight. Talk. There, there's eight Big Twelve oh. bowl games. He didn't specify. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, I where he was going with there's that. eight Big Twelve bowl games. Mm-hmm. Of those eight, there are no bowl games where the Big Twelve team does not have a winning record over their opponent in mm. their history. Now there is okay. three so first that meetings. Because haven't played, right? Because right. because th- TCU's never played Michigan. Hold Wisconsin, on, whoa, you're, sp- you're spoiling it! Whoa, whoa, Michigan. whoa! But what? You're spoiling our matchups, Asa. Gotta yeah, build Asa. the suspense. Let's take a rewind here. All folks. right, all back. right. Who are we playing? Starting off with the Big Twelve Bowls. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, we were concerned it was going to be the Frisco Bowl, which is a non-Big Twelve bowl. Pre-Christmas Bowl on OSU's winter graduation. So I was talking with my friend who's in the band, and she didn't think that the band would be able to go. If if they go, they wouldn't get there early enough, you know, to do all their pregame festivities that they do at bowl games. So we didn't get that. So now we were all hoping for the Texas Bowl. Asa from I Houston, was. as a Texans fan, you were really hoping for that. But <sighs> early on, sources revealed that Texas Tech was going to go there. Makes sense. Now, in the media the last couple of weeks, we heard reports that Kansas was going to go to the Liberty Bowl and Missouri didn't want to play them. So because those reports came out, it made sense that Kansas was going to go to the Liberty Bowl. That's so weird, though. I, uh, that's one of the most historic one, – one of the most historic college football rivalries is Kansas and Missouri. Right. And their that, coach is under a lot of fire for not wanting to play them. As he should be. I'm pretty sure it's because he got told, hey, if you lose to Kansas, you're fired. And so he said, Maybe. okay, let's just not play them. <sighs> so that, see, those games are what make college football it's I will the best say, sport in the world. Kansas and Arkansas is still a great game. Oh, my gosh. He's already releasing our sources. <laughs> Chase, follow the script. What it's right in front see? of you, Jace. <laughs> follow the script, please. Your guys are not mm-hmm. good at building suspense. Sorry. Um, Jace is keeping Alex it. has – pause? What's that? No. <laughs> All right. So, earlier on – I believe it was last week, then sources said we were either going to go to the First Responders Bowl or the Armed Forces Bowl. And those bowls are tricky. When one of them is a Big 12 Bowl, the other one is not. So it was announced early on that the First Responders Bowl wasn't a Big 12 game, so that means the Armed Forces Bowl would get one. So we all thought Kansas would go to the Liberty Bowl, which they did. And we all assumed that Baylor was going to go to the Cheez-It Bowl because that made the most sense. And that left the Guaranteed Rate Bowl and the... First Responders Bowl and Oklahoma State and OU. And everyone assumed, okay, well, OU won. They're going to go to the guaranteed rate, and Oklahoma State's going to go be stuck in Dallas. Brett McMurphy, who had been releasing bowl info, he's a reliable college football source, he announced that there was major late shuffling with Big 12 games. Now, at this point, it was only the Texas Bowl that had been announced. So then that assumed that, okay, well, OSU's going to get the crappiest bowl, and maybe other teams are going to get better bowls. However... Baylor was the one who got hurt. So now we can talk about the matchups. Baylor is taking on Air Force in the Armed Forces Bowl (laughs) in TCU Stadium. That bowl is pretty trashy. I I just love how the fourth best bowl is the Cheez-It Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. And Oklahoma gets to play there. Oh, my gosh. But Baylor beat Oklahoma. (laughs) Jace. Jace. We're going to have to record the whole thing. (laughs) Did you not see what I, I was will, doing, Jace? You got to react. React. I will, I will just go down all the lines so then Jace can talk about whatever he wants now. Okay. okay. Oklahoma State plays Wisconsin in the guaranteed rate pool in the Arizona Diamondback Stadium on the 27th. Kansas will take on Arkansas in the Liberty Bowl in Memphis' stadium on the 28th. Texas Tech plays Ole Miss in the Texas Bowl in the Texans' stadium on the 28th. Should have been us. OU takes on Florida State in the Cheez-It Bowl in the Camping World Stadium on the 29th, and Texas versus Washington in the Alamo Bowl in UTSA's Alamo Bowl, Alamo Dome on the 29th. Okay, Jace, it's all yours. (laughs) No comment. (laughs) What's the script? You can analyze Uh, uh, (laughs) that. So, here's the thing. 
when you look at the bowls, none of them make sense in a way because Correct. we went to Arizona last year. We're going back to Arizona this year. And w- uh, an important note is the guaranteed rape bowl is like a, a second child of the Fiesta Bowl. Like they oversee them. So on Mike Gundy's press conference yesterday, yesterday it was the same man. Scott from the Fiesta Bowl. He's like, hey, Mike, it was like 364 days ago we were having the same Zoom call with mm-hmm. you, you know? And it's all under the Fiesta Bowl website. So we're basically going to, like, the Fiesta Bowl Junior. Yep, except this time, instead of PlayStations, you get a hotel stay. So that's great, yeah. The Verbo? No, no, guaranteed rate. That's also a... Oh, I no, guess it's, it's a insurance. mortgage company. A mortgage. So they're going to get house. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Presley's getting a nice house today. Um, <clears throat> none of them make sense. Like, the only one that makes sense is Kansas versus, versus Arkansas mm-hmm. and the Liberty Bowl. Because, no offense, here's just my opinion. Here's how it should have gone. We played in the Cheez-It Bowl two years ago. So, right. obviously, that's out for us. Mm-hmm. Baylor hadn't played there since 2015. and when they it wasn't were, even the Cheez-It Bowl. And it wasn't the Cheez-It Bowl, and they had the same record as us above Oklahoma and had beaten Oklahoma. So, therefore, I think they should have gone there. The Texas Bowl, I mean, Texas Tech, I guess that, that one makes sense, kind of. I don't but think so. Texas Tech probably should have been the one to go to the Cheez-It Bowl in the beginning because they were above everybody else. Mm-hmm. So, they should have gone there. And then on top of which, why of Baylor did they get picked to go to the Lock- Arm- Lockhead Armed Forces Bowl when they had beaten Kansas? Baylor truly did get screwed. They I had know, beaten I Oklahoma. Know. Okay, well, they start going to a bowl, and it's close to home, so then all the fans can go. But if I was told, hey, you get to go spend a week in Orlando, and then they're like, actually, you're going to go play in your Big 12 stadium that you've already played. Yeah. you got to remember one of the biggest factors in bowl game selections is money. And people know Oklahoma fans travel very well, and and oh, I know, and they That's... save up from they save up the whole year to go to the whatever bowl game it is, and Oklahoma will fly. Out. And, and I I don't know if I can say the same about the Baylor fans. No, 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 the no, no, other no, no. thing the, is that, that's the thing that was the deciding yeah. factor. There was a ton of orange in the Fiesta Bowl last year. Granted, it's a bigger bowl. However, people still had to travel from Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, wherever OSU fans are, and get there. Guaranteed Ray Bowl probably saw that. And yep. they said, well, will OU show up and show out? Which they probably will, but I'm sure. Well, Wisconsin fans are all over as well. I mean, well, no, they're the Snowbirds. All of those Wisconsin people have retired to in Arizona. I mean, my aunt and uncle <laughs> did, gonna be a very did that. It's going to quiet bowl game. <laughs> they lived in Madison, and they already bought it's tickets. too hot in here. <laughs> my dialysis. I, uh, I just find it funny that Baylor, congratulations, you got a bowl game. Go play in your Big 12 rival stadium that you lost by one point, and now they're going to the playoffs. Actually, Have they, fun. They played at home. Baylor. I, I said that. So they played TCU at home and lost by one. You said in TCU stadium. Yeah, well, they're, that's where they're going to play now. So wh- what, what are saying. your thoughts on this Texas versus Washington game? I'm curious about this one. Michael Penix Jr. is good. Michael Penix Jr. is good. Unfortunately, I think Quinn Ewers is better. Yeah. But he's, dude, he's been very hit or miss as of late. But the other thing is, is, Texas plays well when their fans are there. And this is basically. And they have a very good bowl record. Like, and this is basically decade. a They're home game. I mean, how far away is. San Antonio? Yeah. An hour? <laughs> yeah, <it's not> that <laughs> bad. The, the thing is, they've been there multiple times. It's a decent bowl game. It like, is. it's not a bad one at all. And I'm going to tell you this I don't think a lot of Washington fans are going to show up. Because the last time Washington played in the Valero Alamo Bowl, you want to know what happened to them and who they played? Who'd they play, Jace? It was in 2011, and they played the Heisman, Robert Griffin, and lost by 12. That wasn't that bad, but they lost by 12. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) made it sound like... That was going to be... Slaughtered. 40. (laughs) But still, I I don't know. They weren't weren't there in that game. What do we think about OU? Uh, I I don't have a, see any sort of problem with Oklahoma winning against Florida, Florida State. State. They're on the up and up. If Dylan Gabriel plays like he did in that first quarter against us, shoot. Or Oklahoma, Texas Tech. Or Texas Tech. Oklahoma's going to win Do by at least 14. Do we think Texas Tech can compete with Ole Miss? Yes. Because they Ole can. Miss has dropped so far. They can. Now, that that out of all these games, I have the Big 12 going 7-1. and one, And that might be the one loss, I think. You have TC beating Michigan? We'll get oh, into that. that later. <laughs> we'll get into that later. So my thing is, okay, Texas Tech coming off a big win, Ole Miss kind of falling. Unfortunately, it is still a Big 12 SEC team, and the Big 12 team kind of is hit or miss in they the are. last they recent are. years. That's that's my thing. The Big 12 team's offense is not hit or miss. It's the defense. But at the same time, Jackson Dart, the quarterback for Ole Miss, has been – Almost as inconsistent as Quinn Ewers this year. And that's saying something. Correct. I think something that 
maybe people are talking about it and I'm just missing it. Wisconsin has a new head coach. Yeah. Last year in the bowl game, we played a new head coach. However, Marcus Freeman was originally the defensive coordinator. DCU. So he, he was with the team all season. So that's that's the funny thing because I'm What's just going to flashback. Luke, Luke Fickley? Luke, Luke Fickle. Luke Fickle was with Cincinnati all year. So Mike Gundy was asked, he, they like, are you going to have to look at Cincinnati film? And he's like, yeah, we're going to look at both Cincinnati and Wisconsin because we don't know what Fickle will bring it's, to the Badgers. Mm. He, here's the thing, and it's exactly what happened last year. We don't know what to expect. Because it's a new coach. And quarterback, correct? Correct. Chris Graham Mertz is, is transferring. So it, it's going to be interesting. That will be a fun bowl game. All the Big other, 12 bowl games are really fun. Some other things that Gundy correct. said that I think are of note is he said, we still don't know what Spencer's injury is. It's not something that can be measured. It's just how he feels. And he can't imagine why Spencer would not play in the bowl game. And for those who are longtime Gundy fans, you know that he's big on loyalty. So if a – Athletes entering the transfer portal, they won't play in the bowl game. Well, someone was asked loosely because news did break that Mason Cobb, one of the best defensive guys, is entering the transfer transfer portal. And without asking, oh, will Mason Cobb play? That was hinted at. And Gundy responded back that it just kind of depends on injuries and how they're feeling in practice. Mm. So I can. So, see so maybe Gundy's changing. In yeah. this case. I could see. Because, also, we are incredibly injured. We you are. Know? You're going to have to let these players who want to leave play. Right. Would that be Spencer? I don't think so. I do kind of think so. I think Mike Gundy knows we need a bowl win. If we lose this bowl, that's a lot of people are going to be upset. But he could reasonably start Spencer and then bench him. Yeah. Uh, so you're saying, like, he plays a quarter or two and then – And if it's bad, you'll yeah. be like, all right, sure. well, it's your last game and you blew it. Sorry. Sure. I say we just bring in Zane Flores a couple weeks early and <laughs> start him. Hey, you, I know you just won the you lost the Nebraska championship, but let's c- play the guaranteed rate bowl. Come on. Um, oh yeah, Gretna. Really huh? Gretna, Nebraska. Gretna. Um, so I do want to about the Luke Fickle situation. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go back to the Big Twelve. So last year, Texas Tech they hired the new head coach Joey McGuire, right? Right. He was supposed to coach the bowl game, right? But he said to the interim head coach, "No, I'm not going to coach it." You've been here all year. I'm going to let you coach this game. I'm going to sit at the press box with the, with the AD. What was the Jim Knowles? Did Gundy say, no, you're not allowed? Or was did Ohio State Ohio State him? took him and Jim left. That When you sign with a different team, you're, you're asked to leave. But the thing is. Where is the interim coach for Wisconsin now? Like, is he staying he, on staff? Yeah, he's a defensive coordinator. He'll stay. He'll stay. He'll For this game, he'll go back to D.C. to be the defensive coordinator position. So. Not the capital. Right, no, I understand. Thank you for clarifying. But um, okay, let's go back to Ace's hot take of Michigan losing to TCU. So here's the thing. Here's the thing for me. I watched. I watched the first quarter of the Big Ten championship game, and I was doing something else. And I came back in the start of the third quarter. It's fourteen to thirteen. Like, are you kidding me? And I understand Michigan's a second half team. I'll give them that. They Which make for sure. I they, mean, they really, I thought I thought we were going to see the spoiler makers again. And then Michigan was like the first play of the second half. Boom, eighty yards, touchdown. But it, all the way up until about the last five minutes or so, I would say of the fourth quarter, and then I was like, okay, Michigan's Michigan's going to win. But I mean, this is like an eight and four Purdue team, like the spoiler makers. It's like you're struggling against them in your championship game, and it's indoors. I was like, oh, man, Michigan, I'm sorry, but I got TCU pulling off the upset. I just think Max Duggan wants it more. I really do. And I think the Big 12 was going to pull out some Big 12 magic. That's my some super sooner, hot, some, hot, hot, right out of the microwave, some, hot pocket, hot take. Instead of Sooner Voodoo, it's Hypnotoad Voodoo. Hypnotoad. As much as I would love for that to happen. Come on, Jace. Come on. Michigan was there last year. They know the pressure. I just can't imagine the pressure on Max Duggan knowing that, oh, I just won 12 games in a row, and if I lose this game, I get nothing and have to leave. But he already lost in such a big moment. He's like, man, I know. It. I, right, the chip's I taste off his defeat. shoulder, you yeah. know? Like, the undefeated season's over. It's just tough, man. I I, I think I'm, I love this matchup, though, because guess what? They're both second-half teams. They are. They're both second-half teams. So I'm not even going to watch the first half. <laughs> and <laughs> no, TCU knows how to play from behind. <laughs> Correct. So I, they've I, been behind, which is why I could definitely see TCU winning. But I just there's something to be said 
yes, Michigan did struggle against Purdue in their championship game, but they also struggled against Illinois in not their championship Illinois. game. Illinois. <laughs> Illinois. But again, the other side, TCU struggled against Baylor at home. I can't argue. They're on their own. That's fair logic. TCU struggled against t- Texas Tech. In TCU. But don't we all agree that the Big 12 is the most competitive conference? 100%. Which is why I feel like we don't know how good TCU actually is. Michigan is favored by nine. That's a little much. And Ohio or Georgia is favored by six and a half. Wow. Really? I would have thought. Well, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. I would have thought I'd been like seven and a half and six and a half, though. Not nine. How much is Kansas State? How come in these bowl games, the higher ranked team is the home team? But in the other ones, the lower-ranked team is the home team. Uh, it switches every year between which conference. Oh. So, like, last the year in the, the Sugar Bowl, Baylor was the away team. The rest of the bowls do not have stat lines yet. Oh. It's just well, these. That's unfortunate. Um, anyway. So, you're saying TCU wins. And it's going to be a crazy one. Georgia wins? Georgia does win. Georgia and then wins Georgia wins national, national championship. Oh, we've not, not given TCU the time of day in that one? <laughs> no, no. See, and as we've said before, I mean, TCU competitively, our conference, I think we're going to have the best bowl game winning percentage out of any conference. But our top-tier teams are not as good as the SEC's top-tier so teams. So let's just real Which quick. is why I think TCU won't win, because we don't, we don't know how good they are. Listen, the Big Ten is overrated overrated are you talking about the big 10 or the pac 12 and acc because i could get all, all three <laughs> okay. all three are overrated real quick i just want you to say win or lose ready okay baylor win win that's easy i just wanted win or lose no commentary <laughs> that's not easy <laughs> oklahoma state one two three win Jason, who's playing anything. quarterback jace win uh, i'll say win kansas win win Texas Tech. Win. One, two, three. Lose. Okay. OU. Lose. Win. Texas. Win. Win. Okay, so you guys disagree on the Cheez-It Bowl and the Texas Bowl. Are you just salty that we don't get to go to the Texas Bowl? (laughs) (laughs) A little bit unhappy with that. Would have been great to have a few extra days with the Lucas family down in North Houston. But that's not the path I'm on. The hope is that... Maybe all three of us. Hopefully, all three of us. But at least one of us will be. Correct. At the one guarantee. of us. One of. It's a cra- That's a crazy time of the year for me. Uh, but Ms. Dusky is very persuasive, so she probably will convince me to go to the bowl game. She also I'm has family down there. I do have family. So Ani, a lot of us Ani, are worried. Ani, Gwen, and Uncle Jim, if you're listening, I'm really trying to come out and see you guys for, for yeah. Christmas. I think so. at, at, at the worst, Alex should be there. Yeah. I, I mean, I hope we're there too. But if we're. I might just go as a fan. You know, Knoxville to Tyson, That's true. Or Knoxville to Phoenix, I found flights for like 300 bucks. I mean, hey, if you go as a fan, you can still do some videos. Yeah, I'll just sit there. I'll be live tweeting. So at least one of us will be at the Guaranteed Rate Bowl, and we will give you guys updates. But I can't imagine that we would do another podcast before 2023. You can't imagine? We're not doing a New Year's Eve. No, can't get on I'll Zoom? I'll be in Wisconsin. <laughs> I'll be in Wisconsin. Nah, you should do the podcast while you're from at Lambeau, Lambeau Field. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, guys, reporting live. The Packers are we losing. We could. Packers are losing in a freezing playing? cold. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, if we are all at the Guaranteed Rate Bowl, we, we will probably do more video rather than a exact podcast form. Makes if you sense. look at the Fiesta Bowl last year kind of what we did post game even though i was not at the he was Fiesta not he was there in spirit year. he's hoping to be here this year can't go to phoenix twice without i was about to say Mr. it's, it's the same dang bowl game except we're playing at a different stadium versus a lesser team so or that's like that's all i have to say at the same hotel and i will say my favorite part of the fiesta bowl last year was we got to go to the phoenix zoo and see chudy the greater one-horned rhino pick who he thought she thought was going to win and she wrongly picked notre dame this year it's an orangutan Man, I, I like that, orangutan. I hope that, that orangutan picks Michigan then. <laughs> All right. Well, do you guys have any last statements on the Bulls? Uh, so just I'll, I'll double sti- I'll, I will go back to my comment. I do think the Big Twelve will have the highest bowl winning percentage. Okay, let's do it. So you have yours is TCU, Georgia, Georgia winning. Yeah. Jace. Michigan, Georgia, Michigan winning. <laughs> Wow! Whoa. You really believe in the Wolverines that listen, much? Listen, listen, listen. 
controversy. That is very controversial, and I'm having I'm having a hard time. That, that reminds it. me of Oklahoma State will not punt at all <laughs> in the beginning <laughs> of the year. Another bold statement from Mr. Andrews. I'm what going... can you say? You put your hot, hot pockets in the microwave. I, I put did. mine in the oven. I did. I'll go Michigan, Ohio State. Ohio State. Okay, so we got. Three. I like yours. That's a fun I like one. Yours. That's a good. That's I a think, fun one. I think Georgia's fairy tale will come to an end. She's just bitter about the Georgia Tennessee game. Well, I also. I'm just, bitter I about the Georgia Tennessee like game. I'm not. <laughs> uh, I wonder why. <laughs> and, and by the way, that shirt isn't. While this. it would be amazing, I just don't think TCU can do it. I just, I don't, you know, Asa, maybe Jason and I will be wrong. I am so looking forward to texting in the group chat about TCU winning. <laughs> well, you guys heard all of our opinions, Jace. I will say. Uh, <laughs> he has a lot <laughs> to say today. This is, uh, this is, a, this is probably going to come off as a, 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 oh, you just want to win something. I am forcing the other two co-hosts to do a Capital One oh, Bowl Mania true. thing He's with me. He's not forcing. Me. I think those are fun. And well, um, I feel forced, but okay. <laughs> because you've won and you already won. I, don't I did. Lose. That's why you're doing it. And that's not what I'm doing. I want to do it for fun. Hey, where, first where are you taking us out to dinner? You, yeah, you still have to take us out. By the way, this doesn't make it. This is a whole separate. <laughs> hey, thing. if I win, then we've all won something. <laughs> yeah, oh, this is oh, all, this so is, it is <laughs> about winning. This is like a last minute edition. Um, I want to give him my two I weeks. Wish the, the listeners could see his face of defeat. I'm, I'm going right to give my two weeks notice to the podcast today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I th- I'm feeling bullied in this in this situation. Anyway, oh, your love picks. Bowl your, picks. Your love. We will Jace. do conduct those this week. Uh, yes, I can. Will they? I'm not going to do them this week just because the spreads won't be out just okay. yet. No, that's fair. I will send it out to y'all. Okay. okay. Um. And how do we let the the fans know who won? Well, there's, there'll be pictures. You can have like pictures. Okay. You can take a picture of like what you're doing. So what we could do is maybe before the um, two before. playoff games, we can all take a picture of what our percentage is at that time. Oh, I kind of like, think records. it might be fun to do like a little break, you know. So the bowls start on December 16th. So then maybe after like a week of bowls, do another update, and then right before the playoffs, do another update. Okay. We could take a picture and put it on Twitter. Wait, for this, uh, for Capital One Bowl Mania, do the New Year's Six Bowls and those bowls have, like, points, higher points? So he- here's what the way I'm going to do it, um, if you all would like to do it a different way. Uh, and we talked about it a little bit. I'm just going to do standard, which is okay. 10 points, Pick out, picking right. the right team. Okay. If you all would like to do something else, there's two other ways. There's the not. spread, no. which I don't think we want to do. No. Just because that's a lot. No. Or confidence. I don't want to do that. Which is you pick the winner. And then you if rate. I'm, if I'm picking the winner, one? I am confident that they will win. <laughs> yeah. So I'm confident in TCU. <laughs> well, you're gonna get ten points if they win. You're gonna get ten points if Coastal Carolina wins. Then. All right. Well, <laughs> so. today is Monday, the fifth. So three weeks from tomorrow, Oklahoma State plays. So hopefully, three weeks from today, we will be in Phoenix, and you guys can hear from us again. If Fingers crossed. not. We will enjoy s- the game. Yeah, enjoy the game. <laughs> that is a, 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 a t- nine fifteen Central Time on ESPN. Oh, hey, just <laughs> if not, if we do not talk to you again for the bowl game, do not worry. Our predictions, including scores, will we'll be put on, on Twitter, on Twitter, or Twitter and Facebook. So we will keep I mean, everyone updated. In theory, uh, let's get script y'all. We could figure out how to do a little Zoom before the yeah, game. that's true. We and could. we could do, like, you know, a, a little 10-minute talk yeah. about you the game. You guys will hear from us again, whether it's via Zoom or in Twitter. Phoenix. <laughs> or something. But we do want to thank all of our listeners for this semester of the OSC Preview Podcast. We know a lot of you have made us your top podcast yes. listen on Spotify, so thank you very much. We appreciate, we appreciate that. Uh, y'all. Well, that'll do it for the f- final <laughs> Authentic podcast of the 2022 <laughs> season, but we will come back in I'm 2023. I'm feeling like Caleb Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you have painted on your nails there, Jason? Uh, it says back to back. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to the OC Preview Podcast. Uh, Jace has one more thing to say. <laughs> Man, I just wanted you to say. Enjoy bowl season. Yes. It's college football's March Madness, and it's so fun to watch all the bowl it is, games. It is. Make your own picks. Correct. 
Also, no, enjoy the World Cup. I know USA's out, but uh, watch it. Respond back. If you guys have better bowl wins than us, then hats off to you. Yeah. yeah probably will. <laughs> I also just wanted to say one thing as well. Oh, Ace has um, something to say again? Why don't we call him out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Meet me in the parking lot. Thanks, <laughs> Jace. Deal. We'll discuss this. Deal. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to work with both of you, um, Alex and Jace. So thank you for having me along. It's been a fun ride. As you said, I know we'll do one more podcast, but while we are, are having our last authentic one, just wanted to say thank you. It's been a pleasure to work with both of you. We will, thank you. Can't thank imagine you. better better analysts than Asa Lucas and Jace. Andrews. So if you still want to fight me, Jace, you can. Yeah. After I said such a nice thing about you, I'll meet you in the parking lot and I'll give you a hug. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. We will have a podcast in the spring. It will likely be a little bit of a different format, not focusing on one OSU sport because there are so many. But you will hear from us again, and hopefully, you'll hear from us in three weeks in Phoenix. So I'm Alex Tusky, joined by Jace Andrews and Asa Lucas. Have a great day and go, go Pokes. Pokes.